I've been doing what I do here for 24 years. And if I was in your shoes, I wouldn't know what to say to me. So, but your love, your support, and your prayers through this have been phenomenal for myself and for my wife. And so I want to thank you for that. Um, I've been preaching this series, and I kind of, it's this, this is um, one of those deals where the banner behind me, if you've been to my house, either for garage night as one of the guys, or if you've came over and worked out with me at the house and puked, um, <laughs> or not, okay, um, that banner used to be right behind the squat rack, okay, and um, it didn't mean much while you were squatting, but it might mean a lot the next day when you can't stand. How many understand what I'm saying? Um, and we, in my family, we've always believed in, in, in training, and, and in training, we've always believed in squats, and, and it was pretty cool. My wife had taken, she likes to do the little selfie things, and she's pretty good at it, and uh, we were out working out in the garage one day, and she did the selfie thing psh, psh, with me and her, and we were out by the tire with the sledgehammers and, and, and hammering away on it, and in the background was our son doing squats, doing front squats. And my nephew, Chris, from Texas, commented on the picture, didn't say a word about me or didn't say a word about my beautiful smoking hot wife. But he said, hey, is that someone doing front squats in the background back there? And if you've ever done front squats, and if you've never done front squats, probably more so if you've never done front squats and you do a good dose of front squats one day, you may not be standing the next day or will definitely be uncomfortable, okay? And so in this message, I've been, you know, with the first one we did standing up, we talked about Job. We talked about in Job 42.10 where it says that when Job in, in chapter 42, he prayed for his friends and his, his whole thing turned around. Well, let me just say this. Um, and, 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 and in that message, I thank you guys for your prayers. And, and I know that is, it is your prayers for me and Rhonda that have kept our feet solid as possible, which sometimes still doesn't feel real solid, um, but has kept them as firmly planted on the rock as we possibly could be at this stage, okay? And um, your prayers have been very important to us. The next week, which was last week, I talked about standing on. And, and everybody would think, okay, that's going to be standing on the rock. But no, last week I talked about standing on the experiences of others. And sometimes people who have been through something can help you get through something. Okay? Well, let me just say this. I haven't found anybody really. And there are, we do have a few people in our congregation. And um, I did meet a, a young lady from our congregation last Sunday after church that had been through um, a, a situation similar to where me and Rhonda are walking. And so people can help you get through hard times and people will help you get through. But it really depends on relationships. You know, I always say here at Big House, relationships are not disposable and neither are people. And, you know, sometimes we think that when, we, when we've taken a relationship as far as we need to take it and, it's, and, and then, then we're done with it. And we can, but truth of the matter is, in God's kingdom, relationships aren't disposable and neither are people. Jesus died for every single person that ever lived and breathed. And so if he thought they were important, then somehow, somewhere in deep down the fibers of our being, we ought to find a place to love them, like them, and feel like they're important as well. How many understand what I'm saying? I know that's tough preaching, but it's good preaching. So that was standing on the relationship. So today I'm going to talk about standing before. And I'm going to be preaching out of Exodus chapter 3. Now, if you've been hanging around Big House, and maybe even if you are one of those people that take notes, maybe you've got a, a journal of some of the messages that I've preached, um, you may recognize that I've preached out of this chapter recently, matter of fact. I actually preached out of this chapter in July when it was our seven-year anniversary. And I, I talked to you about a message. I preached a message. I'm just talking to be honest. Honest, I always tell my wife, I say, I'm going to get up and I'm going to be real calm this week. It just doesn't happen, does it? <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to sit on, give me that stool. I'm just going to sit on the stool and teach and be a nice fellow up here today. But that's not going to happen either, all right? So we'll just get rid of the stool. We'll let the guy that's singing sit on the stool. And he did, hey, he, he could be passionate sitting on the stool. He does a good job, man. I, I couldn't sit on a stool and be passionate about what I'm doing today. Um, only thing I was passionate about sitting on a stool was when I was slamming back Jack Daniels, and, and, and I don't do that anymore. So I was pretty passionate about that from the stool, okay? 
Now, actually, the next morning, let's, let's be real honest, okay? I don't want to be like the Budweiser commercial where, you know, the Budweiser commercial and you got the beautiful girl and all that, at the, and the guy buys her a Bud, and then they all go home in this nice little Ferrari. It's not like that, okay? I might have been passionate about slamming back Jack Daniels, but the stool that I really got passionate about was the one that I was hugging the next morning, all right? <laughs> If you're a visitor, just welcome to Big House, okay? <laughs> so I preached a message for our seven-year anniversary from Exodus chapter 2 and 3. And, and it was, I'm going to use the same set of scriptures. So today is Exodus 3, 4, and the title of the message is Standing Before, okay? Now, in, in July, I, I realized, and so I, I'm, I'm just saying this, if, you, if I don't say this, then you're going to go, wow, he's already preached out of this, and, but it is a different message, okay? And it's totally coming from a whole different direction. And, and the, on the um, anniversary message, I, I preached a message called Take Them Off, okay? Now, you got to watch out preaching that message at Big House, Okay. <laughs> Keep it on, okay? That's what we should be saying. Uh, but we talked about how God told Moses when he got in his presence, take off your shoes, okay? And I'm not saying take off your shoes either, okay? This is a whole different thing. But you can, you can, and, and backing up on, remember I talked about when you get ready to come to the house of God, that in your heart, in, 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 your, in, your, in, your, in your spirit, when you get ready to approach even Sunday mornings when you're coming in the car, you ought to spiritually be taking off your shoes, preparing yourself to be on holy ground, preparing yourself to be in the presence of God. Are you hearing that? And that was kind of the premise of that whole message. And so that was that message. That's not what I'm preaching today. Although it was a good message, I really thought, hey, that's a good message. I ought to just re-preach that one right now. But I'm not going to. That's not what the Lord put on my heart. What the Lord put on my heart was standing before. And although I'm saying that I, I, I'm, I'm preaching a series that I've preached before, I preached it before the computer that I was preaching on before crashed and I don't have none of those messages so they're still all fresh messages but I just felt like the Lord inspired me to preach this message because your pastor at times doesn't feel like he's standing you know I definitely don't feel like I'm standing strong at times now I will tell you this two months ago I felt like I could stand strong in any situation two months ago I preached a message to us how many remember about Caleb being Caleb crop pot strong gee man Christmas someone turned up the heat do you understand what I'm saying? And so, but, but I am still standing. I, I talked a few weeks ago and just kind of mentioned walking with a limp right now, kind of like Jacob did. And, and I'm not preaching all the messages at Big House right now because I just don't have it right now. But God's given me enough to bring it on Sunday morning. And then I want to be here with our people because it's good for me. This is healing for me to be here with you, to hug your necks, to be together, okay? So I am still standing. And I am still standing tall on the rock because I do know this. If I was going through this situation right now without Jesus Christ, I would be a stinking mess right now. Just bottom line. I would be off the grid, off the chart. I would be violent. Because violent thoughts are going through my mind. I'm just able somehow to contain them. I will be way, way off the chart. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? So even though I may not feel like I'm standing, I'm not standing with the posture maybe that I stood one time. But I am still standing. And I know that that's why we're going through this series. Is God wants us to know that we can still stand, stand, we can still stand tall. We can stand tall as we stand up for each other. We can stand tall as we stand on and with the experiences of others. And today we can stand tall as we stand before. And let me just go to the message now. Exodus chapter 3, verse, I'm just going to read you 1 through 6, and I'm going to read you some of my key verses, and we're just going to dig in. Exodus chapter 1 through 3, I'm going to read to you from the New Living Translation, but I'm also going to be using the English Standard Translation for some of my verses. So here we go. Exodus 3, one day Moses was tending sheep. He was tending the flock of, of his father-in-law, Jethro. And he went deep into the wilderness of Sinai. Let me tell you this. The wilderness will take you deep. He went deep into the wilderness of the Sinai, to the mount of God. Suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared to him. Now you realize, he's tending sheep. Did you get that? As he wasn't on a spiritual journey in his mind. He's tending sheep. And it says this. 
suddenly, just kind of like, just out of nowhere, just like, what the heck? Suddenly, the angel of the Lord appeared to him as a blazing fire in a bush. <clears throat> Moses was amazed because the bush was engulfed in flames, <clears throat> but did not burn up. And matter of fact, truth of the matter is, I probably preached just that scripture as a message as well, too. Amazing, Moses said. Can you just say, my wife would have been like, what? <laughs> eyeballs going like this. Got those cute little glasses. It makes her eyeballs go even bigger too when she does that. What? <laughs> Dang, you're hot, girl. I'm sorry, you guys are here. I, 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 every once in a while, she, she distracts the preacher. <laughs> Amazing, Moses said to himself. I'm one of those guys, I don't say much to myself. If I'm saying it, it usually comes out. Just, whoa, whoa, did I say it out loud? Sorry, guys. He said to himself, why isn't that bush burning up? It must go, I must go over and see this thing. Verse 4, when the Lord saw that he had caught Moses' attention, God called to him from the bush. Moses, Moses. Here I am, replied Moses. I'd be freaking out. I'm just going to tell you. I look at these spiritual men of God, and I'll talk about this in a second. I look at these spiritual men of God, and I'm going like, unless the story just got written like the guy was calm, because I'm freaking out. My name gets called out of a burning bush. I'm not just like going, yeah, right here. What you need? Here I am. Don't come any closer, the voice says, God told him. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses heard this and he hid his face in his hands because he was afraid to look at God. Now, this story seems like a very simple story. If you've been around church very long, you've heard it a million times. I've preached it. I don't know how many times, more times than I can count because computers crash. So I don't have the old messages, but I know I could find at least one or two on some old computers probably somewhere. And I know I've, I've just preached it this year, but it's not the same story that I'm going to preach. Just let me say this side note. I was reading this yesterday. And like I said, those old, old Testament guys, Moses didn't, you know, I'm, I'm sure he, he was freaked out. Let's, let's, let's all be real honest. He was freaked out. The bush is burning. The bush calls his name. There's nobody else out there. This isn't no card trick. This ain't no Houdini. You know, this is like he's in the middle of the desert with his sheep, nobody else. And the bush calls, he's freaking out. Okay. He's not just like, here I am. Okay. So here I am. That's what he says though. But the bush says, I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham. Now I'm going to tell you this, Abraham, I've preached about Abraham before. I had a whole new revelation of Abraham yesterday as I'm studying this story, as I was reading this. Because if you know anything about Abraham, I don't know how he did it. He walked his son up a mountain, tied him up, put him on an altar. Let's get ready to take his life. Abraham's a stud. And, and, and when it comes to the, the kingdom of God stuff, your pastor's not that stud. Let me just tell you that. I don't know that I could do that. I, is it okay if I'm just honest and transparent with folks here? It's because I know that's what we hope we would all be able to do. But I'm in a place right now where I think I have a pretty good measuring stick of what I would be able to do. And I've told God, I, and, and it's almost despicable in my own mind. I've told God I would trade anything to have that boy back. And when I say anything, I mean anything. So I don't know that I could march my son up a mountain the whole time knowing I'm going to take them ropes that I got sitting on that, that little, that he's packing up the mountain. So side note, Abraham, when you, when you, when you now hear the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, starting out with Abraham, that's a pretty impressive lineup right there when it comes to dedication and devotion to God, because I don't think there's many that measure up right there. So when, when we're talking about that God, that, that's pretty stinking impressive. 
So back to the story, standing before. Moses is up here on the mountain. He's, he's tending his dad's, his father-in-law's flock. And, and the, the, the whole story that I just read transpires. Well, if you fast forward in your book of Exodus, to just to chapter 19, a few chapters, and, and you read chapter 19, it starts out this way. You can go there with me or you can just listen either way. The Israelites arrived in the wilderness of Sinai. Anybody recognize the name? Same place that Moses was. The, the Israelites arrive in the in the wilderness of Sinai exactly three exactly two months after they left Egypt after God set them free from the sin of Egypt the Israelites show up at the Mount of Sinai in the same wilderness spot that Moses had been before he stepped into Egypt to bring the the Israelites out of Egypt he'd already stood before God in that place are you hearing what and watch this. After breaking camp, they came to the base of the mountain and set up camp there. Then Moses climbed to the mountain and appeared before God. Why did he do that? Because he knew if he's back in the same old place, God probably still wanting to talk to me. We just have, they were being led by a cloud of fire by day, a pillar of cloud by night. They were being guarded by the pillar of cloud so that at night, so that so they were had low cover or, or by, by, had coverage from the sun during the day, and and and, and at, at night the fire would give them light and warmth. And here they are again in this wilderness place of Sinai. And um, you know, I, I wish I could say I was probably the most profound preacher, but I'm not. Um, but I will say this. God's word is God's word is God's word. And there's always something new, fresh, and exciting in there, even if you've read it before. And I've preached this before, and I, I knew God was leading me to preach from this story. So I'm digging, and I'm going, God, what's going on here? And, and what, do you, what do you want? I know it's not take, take a moment. We're not talking about the same thing we were talking about back in the anniversary. We're not, in the ch as a church, in the same place that we were, even though that was just a handful of months ago. We were in a good, we, uh, let me just say this. I'm very proud of our church, very proud of you as a church men and women of Big House Inc. that, that call this place home uh, because I've had, I am walking with a limp, you know, and, and this, this church is not, uh, it, this, and this has shown me, and, and I'm so grateful, this church is not carried on Pastor Jeff's shoulders or, or his wife Rhonda's. It's carried, that Jesus said, I'll build my church and, and, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. In other words, it doesn't matter what comes, hell or high water, it's not going to prevail against the church. This is God's church. And, it's, and, and you guys have been strong. We, me and Rhonda have had to pull back and, and, tr and try to allow the Lord time to heal us or take time in the Lord's presence to heal or just back off and slow down. And, but, but the church is still moving on and it's so exciting to me because even though I may feel like I may not be standing very strong, the church itself, Big House Inc., is very strong and in a great place. There was, we had people yesterday at Bible College taking finals and they were our core workers workers that usually go out serving in the hood and 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 they are my leaders that usually do our outreaches and we still had a big old handful of people that showed up for serving in the hood and more than enough people to go out and do the outreach and I still was not needed how cool is that and we have a brand new preacher that stepped up preached the outreach so pastor Jeff could just stay back and be in God's presence that to me says the church is healthy and that makes my heart glad. And be honest, there are not a whole lot of things today making my heart glad. It, it, you, I don't mean to be sounding sad all the time, but life's tough sometimes. You know, I'm, always, I'm the preacher that always said, hey, there ain't no cotton candy jelly bean Jesus, you know. Life's going to be tough. I can't promise you you give your life to Jesus and everything's going to be wonderful and simple because it's not. Well, I'll tell you, try it without him. It's a lot tougher. I don't want to do I, I don't want to do me without him where I'm at today the wilderness that I'm at right now I don't want to do it without him because it's ugly I can imagine it and it's ugly I don't want it and so very simply Moses had already stood before God before he stood before God for the people does that make sense he stood before God all alone with a I don't know if it was God's practice 
that he had a flock of sheep with him the first time and a flock of people with him the second time. But I do know this. Humanly, he stood before God alone before he ever stood before God for other people. And I'm here to say today, Big House Inc., as men and women of God, you got to get to the place where you stand before God alone. Because I would like to say, when you get to heaven, we're all going together as a boatload, and there's going to be a big house eating crowd, like all of us wearing our black and white t-shirts. Woo! You may get to heaven, and it may just be all black and white. You know, streets are made of gold. I know there's white gold. I'm not thinking the streets are yellow. Just in case you were wondering, there's white gold, pearly gates, pearls are white. Just saying. But you're going to have to stand before God alone that day. But before you stand before God alone that day and before God ever allows you to stand before him for other people and for everybody or, or as a leader, he wants you to be able to stand before God as you by you, Amen. for you, with you, with him. And so that's kind of where the message goes today. So Exodus chapter 3 verse 4, the, when the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses. Moses replied, here I am. Over in Exodus, same thing. Moses appeared before, he climbed the mountain to appear before God. Some real simple things, I think about appearing before God. And now I will tell you for myself, I'm sure glad. Because if it wasn't for my personal relationship with him right now, I would be a mess and I've said that. But I'm sure glad for a church that knows how to appear before God as well. But I want us to keep being that church. I want us to keep being those people. I want you to be the people for your, for your children and for those who are watching you, for our community. We need to be the people. Next week, and I know this, the timing of this message is, is absolutely perfect because this is our core people. You, you are big house. Now, let me say this. Next week, we're going to have to throw open that garage door. We're going to have people sitting outside. All the doors will be open. There'll be speakers outside because we'll be so packed. Some of you that come and sit in a seat normally won't get a seat next week. Amen. Matter of fact, if you get a seat inside and you see someone that you don't recognize at Big House coming in, you know what I'd like you to do? Shake their hand, hug their neck and say, hey, I was saving the seat for you. Here you go. <laughs> Hello. You know what I'm saying? Because before they show up here, we need to learn to stand before God. We need, to, we need to have our hearts ready before God as a church and individuals. Matter of fact, I would want everybody at Big House to take some extra time this week to be before God alone and pray for those who are coming to pick up turkeys next week. That God would do in their life what he's doing in your life. You know, we say change people, change people. In other words, your changed life makes a difference. That's why we're a church that works on invitation. We're a church where if we bring our friends and family, it just happens. Because let's face it, we're not attracting them by a beautiful building. We definitely aren't attracting them because I'm a great uh, electronic networker. Man, I'm lucky if I can get my phone to work. We're attracting because people see something happening in someone's life and they go like, dude, what's happening to you? What's going on in your life? You know, come on to Big House. Just come check it out. So here we go, standing before God. Exodus chapter 3. I, just, I got four simple points for us in Moses' story, standing before God. Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law and I'm reading this one from the English Standard Version. He was keeping the flock of his father-in-law and he led his flock into the west of the wilderness. Number one, people that get before God are leaders. And people that would like to lead, you better get before God. 
And even if you never thought you should lead, you should get before God. Because every one of us, God has called in some way, shape, or form. And each and every one of us have influence anyways. You're a leader somewhere in some, some direction anyways. There's someone watching you looking for direction from your life and you don't even know it. You're leading. Moses was leading when he was leading those sheep. He, he, he was probably clueless at that point that he'd be leading millions of humans next time he approached that place. Do you understand what I'm saying? When he saw the burning bush, he could have been like lots of us and said, what the heck? Let's get out of here, sheep. Go, 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 go. Like it was a coyote. Right? But somehow, some way, some shape, he knew something was going on at that burning bush that was more important than the fear he was feeling that was more important than anything else. And he approached the craziness of the burning bush. He led. And he stepped up to the burning bush before he ever brought any people close to that presence of God that way. How many understand what I'm saying? And God wants us to lead by example, by getting in his presence. And there ain't nothing that'll change your life than taking time every single day to get in his presence. There ain't nothing that will change you if, 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 because I'll, and I'm, I'm saying this from, from an ugly place of experience. If it wasn't for my time with God, uh, this dude wouldn't be on the grid right now. I'm, I'm just, I'm being as straightforward, honest, and authentic as I can. It wasn't for my time with God. And it's not my time with God now that's making a difference. Because can I, I'm just going to be real honest here. Be real, real open is really what it is. And so I, it's open. I was, I'm always, I'm being honest the whole time, but I'm being open and transparent right now. Worshiping God has been real hard for me right now, in song, or in words, in the traditional put a tape in or turn your iTunes on and listen to some song about God. Been real hard for me this last six, seven weeks. Been super hard. I've been trying, but it's been hard. And yesterday, when, thank God, we had such a strong team that went out into the neighborhood, I went to my office and opened up the Bible and started praying and then finally turned on some worship music and a song hit me. And as I was listening to that song, my heart started to worship God again. For the first time in seven weeks. Now, as me and my wife were chatting about this later at dinner, because how many know a big house, I, I don't preach that worship is a song. Okay. okay? Hey, listen, we realize we're still worshiping God with our lifestyles. And that's probably the most important way to worship God in your everyday walking around, living, breathing, honoring God in what you think, say, and do. How many understand what I'm saying? That's important. It don't matter how dang good you can sing, and I'm sure glad because I can't sing very good, okay? Never could. It probably ain't going to happen even in heaven. I'll probably still be that one that'll be like, oh, can you move that guy down the row a little bit? Because I can't quite sing when he's singing. But yesterday it happened and, but you know what, as, as your pastor, I know, I knew I had to keep pressing in to the point where I could finally do that, be intimate with God thing again. I mean, are you hearing what I'm saying? The fiery bush wasn't looking good to me right now. But Moses led, first he led the sheep. Sometimes you may have to lead in your mind. Sometimes you may have to look at your life and go, if these trees that are here with me watching what I'm doing were people, would I be being a good example? You hear what I'm saying? That's kind of, he, had, he had a mock crowd. And he led. And he led into the presence of God. And then later, God used him to lead people to God. So number one, standing before God, you got to lead. Number two, you got to figure out where your attention is. Watch this. Exodus chapter 3, verse 4, from the Living Translation says, When the Lord saw that he had caught Moses' attention. Let me tell you, 
If you're going to get in the presence of God personally, alone, and intimately, it's going to take your attention. And we have to look at what has our attention on a daily basis and what is robbing your attention from the presence of God. Because our minds, we live in such a crazy world, man. You could be thinking you're praying and all of a sudden, next thing you know, your phone, your hand will reach over, pick up your phone and look at Facebook. You guys acted all holy right now. Everybody, nobody's saying nothing. You ain't getting no amen from me on that, although that is me. There's people going to hell on Facebook, true. There's people that gossip on Facebook. True. There's people that hook up on Facebook. True. How many of you found your, I won't do that. Oh Lord, get this bench out of here. I'm sorry, that was inappropriate. What has your attention is what I'm saying, okay. When we get back, that's why I preach from notes so I can have something to go back to. Number one, lead. If someone's watching your life and they weren't just animals and sheep, if they were humans, would you be given a good example? Getting before the presence of God. Number two, what has your attention in life? Because, and I'm not saying, listen, all of those things that can be negative and terrible distractions and lead people to sin can also be used to lead people to God. And so by no means am I saying, I'm just saying if the devil uses it as a tool, let's pick it up and let's beat him with it. Okay. Uh, let's beat him at his own game. That's what we did when we launched this church. Hey, listen, when we launched this church and we started in a bar, our district official says, well, we've never done it that way before. And we've never had anybody that did it before that way. And it doesn't sound like it's a very smart way to plant a church and get real spiritual. But then they said, but if anybody could do it, it's probably you. So let's go for it. And we did it. And here we are today. Because we took what the enemy would have had used in my life to kick my tail end up and down the street. And we used it to put a great foundation and to set some DNA for a church that anybody could feel welcomed at. That, 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 that set us up to, to be able to reach out to people from every area of life. But what has your attention? And if there's things that have your attention, because truth of the matter is, I'm not going to go... I'm not gonna, I don't have a list up here. So just, just so that if I touched on it already and I got you, sorry, that was just, that was just by, just, just random. But if you know something's got your attention, this is a good time to write it in your notes, write at the edge of your Bible, write it with that scripture. Even if your translation might read a little different, this had my attention on this date. I need to get my attention on God and give it to God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because it's just those things that rob us from walking in his presence. Okay, so number one, lead into his presence by being by yourself in his presence. Number two, what has your attention? Number three, a little closer. I always say this, and, and this is, I'm really, really here right now at this point. I'm just trying to get a little closer to God every day. You know, I said that my first message back in the pulpit after my son's um, celebration of going back to back, going home, I said, I've been preaching the gospel for 24 years. Can you believe that, Leon? I can't even believe that. It's like it's, next year is a quarter of a century. Man, that's a long dang time. It's a long time. And I said that day, I think I got more questions about God right now than I did when I started preaching the gospel and we were just breaking bricks in those days and doing silly stuff. I got questions. I still got questions about God. So what do I do? I'm going to preach solid core values because God's, 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 God's okay with us having questions. Just so you know that. God's okay. God, you, if you have questions about this book, you can dig, you can kick, you can scratch, you can study, you can investigate because it's all true. 
And I know the answer to my issue right now is going to be in here, okay? That, that, that I, I know, like David said, I can't bring my son back to me. I'm going to him, okay? I know that, okay? Uh, but my, my deal is how do I make it through today, God? How do I just keep going on forward? But the answers are right here, and I got to keep getting a little closer every day. The Asian car market overtook Ford, GM, and Dodge by what was called incremental progress. And folks, you don't have to have some great big blow in the world, like everything has been thrown away out of your house, you cleaned it and painted it, and like, look, I'm a brand new Christian, everything's, ah! <laughs> although you might be that way, it's okay, and if you are, that was the way I was, so it's cool, you know, you can, you, not, but not everybody, as long as you're getting a little closer every single day, just a little bit, just a little bit. You get into his word just a little bit more today. You give him just a, you know what? Just think if you gave God just one more minute every day than you gave him the day before. Jeez, if you started right now and you were giving him no time every day, by next Sunday, you'd be giving him seven minutes a day. And by next two Sundays after that, the Sunday after Thanksgiving, the Sunday after Black Friday, you'd be giving him 14 minutes a day. And so it might not be realistic to even give him a whole minute more every day. No, because really, start doing the math on that. I mean, in a couple years, that adds up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But let's just get a little, make it your goal every day, every, to get a little closer to Jesus than you were. To be just a little tighter with it, to walk. I'm telling him, I'm telling him, God, you know, I, I know I had some track record with you. And people are telling you, you've been preaching, you, you've got a track record with God. You are a man of God. You've been in the pulpit for a long time. You've led a lot of us. You've helped us through hard times. But right now, I've still got questions in my mind. And I'm just telling God, God, I just got to get a little. Just, just give me a, a nibble every. Give me something to, to grasp onto, to dig my fingernails into, to, to hold on to every. Just a little bit more. A little bit closer. And that's what God had seen that Moses had gotten a little. Exodus chapter 3, back, verse 4 from the New Living Translation says, When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look. He saw Moses. He didn't say Mo Moses wasn't like, it wasn't like he was running to the bush like, wow, what's going on? Dang, the ice cream man. It wasn't that chasing the burning bush. He got, he got just a little closer to see what was going on. And when God sees you getting just a little closer, he'll speak to us when you didn't expect him to. He'll give us directions that we would have never thought we should have heard. You'll hear things that if you're trying to get closer that you would have not heard if you're not trying. You just, listen, God's a great big God. And that's one thing I know about this. We went and spoke with another pastor that's helped other people walk through this. And we took a little trip after church last Sunday and went to Orange County to one of our friends out there. And um, we just gotta get a little closer. We're, we're willing to do anything and everything we can to try to get just get ourselves a little bit better through the situation every day. And for you, you just gotta get a little closer. You don't have to, you know what? Don't turn into a bunch of super Christians overnight anyways, because truth of the matter is, generally that's on the outside. Yeah. Me and Garrett were talking about this the other day. Garrett's been around, well, a day or two. Too. And I've seen him at church for a few years. Not at this church, either, so I met the church I was at before. <laughs> Generally, the ones that are dressed up as the best Christians have the most to hide. So just keep being yourself. Just be you. And if you got flaws, feel free to let them show. How many know what I'm saying, man? Your preacher, he got lots of flaws, man. He, I realized that I almost cussed in the pulpit last week. <laughs> Somebody said, you did cuss, PJ. <laughs> you know, I won't repeat it, but you can go back somewhere. I don't know. That might be, is it on YouTube yet? Yeah. No? It, it's on, our, on, on the Big House page if you want to go back and see if I really did or not. Um, we're all flawed, man. 
It's when people try to act not flawed that you better be real careful of those folks, okay? Because those folks got something they're hiding and it's ugly usually, okay? We're all flawed. Let's just be real honest. We're all flawed. And all we need is just get a little bit closer to God every day. Just allow ourselves to get a little bit closer to God every day. Let Him deal with the little issues in our life every day. Just because by and I, most of us are going to be on this earth for a day or two. We don't know. But if you'll just get a little bit closer, just keep taking steps. When, when he speaks with that soft, small, still voice to your heart, respond. That's why I said, if he spoke to you about, about some things that's got your attention that shouldn't, write them down and respond to him. That's all we got to do. Just write them down. Respond to his little soft, still voice. Nobody yelled at you. There wasn't fingers pointing at you. There wasn't like a list of sins up here. Like, if this has your attention, if that has your attention, if you've been suffering from this or that, if you've got this condition going on or that condition, and then if you turn from this, it may cause. No, I'm kidding. Just a little closer. So number one, lead into the presence of God by not looking for an audience. Just sheep is cool. Don't, don't look for someone else seeing you go to God. Just go to God. Number two, what has your attention? Let God have your attention. Number three, get a little closer. And number four, hold the ground. Just real simple. And I preached a whole message on take off your shoes. That same scripture that it was my title verse. Exodus chapter 3 verse 5 from the English standard says take off your sandals for the place which you are standing it's holy ground and the place that we're at as a church it's a sacred and reverent place I'm not talking about necessarily this warehouse talking about where we're at as a people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. The journey that God has us on is holy ground. And by saying, take off your shoes, God was saying, the example. Most of us are old enough to remember, maybe you had a grandma, maybe some of you still have this room, that if you walk into the room and had that white carpet, you had to take your shoes off. Some of you may still have home. Say, listen, I've got friends that, that in, in, in colder climates in the winter, when you go in, everybody takes off their shoes at the, because they don't want to dirty up the whole house in the carpet because there's sloppy mud. Listen, I know when I've been out in the garage, if I've got nasty stuff on my boots, I don't want to go in the living room and get it on our light colored carpet. And where we're at as a church is holy ground. And I would challenge us all to reverence it and respect where we're at. And say, God, I feel you thumping at my heart. And I got some issues that I probably should be bringing to you. Because they have my attention in some area. And you should.